It is my pleasure in this coincidentally 36th week of 2020 to welcome you to the virtual launch of the CG36 line uh, in the US. It is rare as many of you know uh, to have an opportunity like this to offer a, a time-tested and proven line of this magnitude, as you will hear today. We're extremely excited about the, what the CG36 can do for you and your operation as we all strive to overcome the ep economic risk and adversity of 2020. What is the CG36 and where does she come from? The CG36 has been designed by the R&D department, choice R&D department, with one goal obtain a balance so helping producers to earn money while lowering stress and saving time. The motivation uh, behind her is that in input costs uh, are more and more expensive. Labor is more and more difficult to find and also expensive. Combined with larger and larger farms, the so should be a contributor and not a constraint. To achieve this goal, uh, the R&D department started in France uh, to select two lines. The first one called M3 Large White and the other one M6 Land Race. Both made with the best genes uh, in the choice choices pool. The most advanced tool uh, are used for the selection of these two lines. The CG36 bidding program is based on multiple traits and is it is not just a selection for quantity without taking care of quality. That we select on multiple traits with two goals. Improve the quality and the quantity of piglets win by their biological mother. And the second goal is to improve the full value of finishes. We believe that the CG36 is a perfect fit to the US market for many reasons. She has two days requirements in terms of prolificacy and finishing quality. She is caring for life as the choice motto. With a high robustness, excellent repro reproductive abilities, and a high longevity, she cares for herself. With her piglet's quality, high milk production, and impressive number of teeth, she cares for her piglets. With her low demand in terms of resources, such as time, feed, milk, she cares about producers and their teams. Finally, she offers today tomorrow's requirements. She is the most sustainable sow on the market. She gives you good economic results while answering the societal expectation and environmental challenges. Very low mortality of sows and piglets, ability for group housing and cage-free farrowing to answer to welfare expectations. Low resources and high longevity needed to protect the environment. I wish the CG36 great success in the US market and I thank you for your attention. So today, as Chuck said, I'll be talking about some important attributes of the CG36. You'll see data from farms domestically and international, and you'll see some of the improvements to the, to the CG36 over many years of selection and intensity. So the first attribute we're gonna discuss is gonna be excellent lifetime performance, high productivity, robustness, low death percentages, and voluntary culling. All of these points are important to producers, this is a this is 2019 results from France. The weaning numbers that the CG36 is producing. So you can see the top 10% is at 13 and a half, 13.1 for the top 33%, and then 12 and a half percent, uh, 12 and a half pigs per litter for all the farms together. You can see at the bottom that uh, we've got a category called the number of litters per sow culled. You can see that is all around six, um, around six litters. So you can see by being able to stay in the herd up to six parities, they're able to wean a lot of pigs in their lifetime, um, 80 pigs per cull sow per lifetime. This slide is with uh, Latin America farms, uh, particularly we've got highlighted there the pigs weaned per litter. Uh, the, the number one farm was at 13.52 uh, pigs per sow, number two, 13.51, uh, number three, 13.39. Again, at the bottom, we have, uh, we have uh, two areas highlighted. One is uh, sow mortality, and you can see that ranges from 1.5% uh, all the way up to 8%. And then we have a replacement rate that's as low as 
uh, 35.6% and as high as uh, 51%. These cells in Latin America are also producing a large number of, of piglets per cell culled. The number one reason for culling is uh, age. And you can see that that's a, a, a little more than a third of the of the culls are coming from age. So you know they're, they're lasting a long time in the herd. The second attribute we're gonna talk about is underlines. The, the CG36 has a, uh, an evenly spaced and properly formed functional and functional teats. It's no secret that a, a good underline can mean it improved numbers weaned from your cell and the CG36 really does deliver in this area. 2020, we have 16.15 uh, total teats and 16.06 functional teats. There's about 30,000 or more gilt selected, CG36 gilt selected each year. And so um, that's a pretty good representation of what the CG36 can, can do is the next attribute we'll talk about is wean to service interval. So a, a quick wean to estrus interval beginning with a parity one sow, it, it leads to those other things below. It leads to a reduced non-productive sow days. It leads to increased number of litters per sow per year. And it also then ultimately leads to an increased number of pigs weaned per sow per year. Highlighted in the middle is their wean the first service interval the percent wean percent, percent sows bred by seven days. So that ranges all the way from uh, 92.28 all the way up to 96.54. So with excellent performance like that in breed back, uh, you'll get, as we talked earlier, an increase litters per sow per year and ultimately an increase in pigs per sow per year. You can see highlighted midway through that page uh, weaned per productive sow or weaned per mated female per year. So those farms are, are well above 30 also with an average of 33.68. This is uh, some of early U.S. data. This is a 3,400 sow unit in the Eastern Corn Belt. About 60% of the sows with this customer are in big pen gestation. The calmness and the demeanor of these sows really lends well to big pen gestation. Born alive or that total born, and they have 14.2, um, but they've got a birth weight of 3.4. This is a second U.S. producer in the United States. This is what the Parity Ones have done. And again, uh, we have the same uh, x-axis there going from 0% up to 100%. The more live born you have, uh, the more weaned you're going to have. You'll get up there to that uh, 30 pigs per cell per year. The, the increase in uh, the live born, uh, the increase in the number of functional teats all leads to an increase in pigs per cell per year. You can see how the percent bred by seven days has increased up to around 90%. And you can also see that uh, uh, the uh, wean to service interval has gone from about eight days down to five and a half days. Spore exposure starting at 21 to 22 days of age. We're feeding her normally up to 180 pounds and then to a gilt developer diet after, and we're not trying to raise market hogs uh, to give us, uh, to produce pigs for us. We want a gilt that has more of a maternal look. And if on the right hand side, You'll see a picture of a gilt there that's, that's more maternal looking and what we'd like to look at replacement gilts. Uh, flush feeding is important to be done uh, prior to mating is 230 to 250 days of age on the third or fourth estrus cycle and weighing 30 to 40 pounds and with a P2 back fat uh, of 13 to 16 millimeters at the time of matings. Our special guest um, is Gary Swanson. Uh, so what is your role in Great Plains Management? As a sow farm technical advisor to help improve the sow farm productivity of the Great Plains managed farms. We have two 3,000 sow farms that have made the transition from the uh, G, uh, CG32 to the uh, 36s. And we began throwing those CG36 litters uh, at the beginning of 2020. And both farms have seen a dramatic uptick in gilt performance with the CG36. Uh, so tell us what your first impression was of CG36. Well, um, there was a noticeable difference. Uh, phenotypically, their maternal looking traits, their length, their structure, soundness, and uh, particularly their underlines. And uh, 
what was your first impression of the CG3600 line? Well, the underlines are just fantastic. Uh, many or lots of good functional teats. And has that additional teat space resulted in more pigs weaned for sale? Yes, absolutely it has. Uh, when uh, the Gilt Sparrow, we uh, load them up with 14 pigs uh, uh, on their first litter to establish the teat functionality. And uh, as you saw in those wean pig uh, uh, results on the charts that you were showing a little earlier, Curtis, uh, these girls are weaning, our girls are weaning almost 13 pigs per litter, and we have a lot of litters that are weaning 14 uh, or even sometimes 15 nice big pigs. What can you tell us about the breed back that you've seen so far with the CG36? Uh, if they're managed properly, bred uh, uh, big enough and, and old enough, um, and are uh, fed properly through gestation, they're going to uh, milk well and they're going to breed back uh, as good as, as any. I know your herd is relatively young right now, but do you have an, an initial impression about what her longevity is going to be like? We, we've got uh, great expectations. I think it's going to be good. I see no problem so far. But is there anything you see that Choice could improve upon with the CG36? You know, I think it's important to reiterate the importance of the size and age at the first mating. You need to manage her properly. All right, thank you. Well, that was my last question, Gary. So thank you very much for your time today, for taking time out of your busy schedule. It's, it's always good to hear from a uh, producer or a user of Choice products and, and uh, get their feedback on, on how we're doing and, and what we could do better. So we appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.